Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today what I want to do is I want to go through the garden and show you some updates on some things. Now, full disclaimer, we are getting to the end of summer, so things are not looking in their prime, but I did take care of them as best as possible. So first I'm going to show you around the gazebo and then we will go from there. So this is the gazebo it was put in last summer. And as you can tell, it is heavily landscaped around here. The ferns are almost three times bigger than they were. Um, you may remember when I did this planter. Definitely was not that full when we started. I also have planted some Anna's Magic Balls. They are an evergreen that get, I think, like 12 to 15 inches tall. Then there was Black Eyed Susans in the corners. I took those out and put in this shrub. Then along this line right here, you guys saw me plant that. Um, it has doubled. And then I have two denim and lace Russian sage. They are a dwarf version. And then four of these bee balms. This is a Tough Stuff Hydrangea. I actually did have one planted here that was smaller, but it was struggling, so I got another one. And then, my sunflower. One of ten came up, but look at it. Isn't it beautiful? I can't remember what this one's called, but what I love about it is you don't get one bloom. There's literally blooms everywhere that there's leaves coming off. Now, this garden back here, I actually did a transformation video and I never showed you. This is a swoop that I did behind the gazebo. I have wild berry hookahs. They are supposedly evergreen, so they will be there all winter long. I have two daylilies right there. Um, some happy star cone flowers. This is a bush clematis, black eyed Susans. And then I put in this trellis, oh, probably a month ago and it is growing a honeysuckle up at which there is a bloom, very fragrant. It's called Sensation Honeysuckle, so grow that one. So I like this area. The purple fountain grass got like 50 times bigger than it was. It's just now starting to put on its, um, what do you want to call them, fountains. There's some more forming. I think I didn't put this in enough sun. I think that that's the problem because you can already tell that it's going into shade and it pretty much gets sun for about an hour and that's it. Black Eyed Susans. Now I had these the whole way around the gazebo and somehow they got massive this year. So that's why I took them out and replaced them with other things because they were kind of crowding some things which you will see in a little bit. The irises, oh my gosh. They're huge. This spot particularly is very, very wet. It holds on to water. I've been adding gypsum to break up the soil, but it's not working. However, I think these irises are sucking up most of that moisture. Then the Pinky Winky Hydrangea tree is doing great, which surprises me because it's kind of on the border of that wet area. And this is a ProGlam Beautyberry. The leaves are usually dark, but this is a new one. It's a shrub. Um, all these little white things are going to be purple berries. And then here's just a little update around the water fountain that needs cleaned. So everything's doing fairly well here. Now, as you can see, I put another one of those shrubs there, but see how this lavender is kind of leggy? Um, the Black Eyed Susans took up this whole area here, like the whole area. So I feel like these were kind of shrouded. Actually, this one still is. So we'll chop it back and give it a chance next year. So this is the bed frame area. If you remember, I planted this on a very hot day and I was worried that the bush violets were not going to fill in. However, they did this right here is one dahlia like it is massive and it's still sending up shoots still going to bloom some more the um climbing roses went a little nuts which that's okay i can trim them back 
Um, I do see some buds forming on there too, so we're gonna get more roses. In this garden over here, the Japanese maple is doing fine. The grass is doing fine. Um, the petunias are massive. We had a bunch of rain, so they're kind of like in between bloom cycles right now. But look at them. All I've been doing is fertilizing them once a week and they are massive. I put three plants that were probably the size of this, like just these two branches in there, and they're that big. I really love these. Then Russian sage is doing good. Now, I'll show you something I've learned. This from here to there is in sun all day long. So these are looking especially good. I mean, they're flopped a little bit because, well, it's their first season. So then I started noticing that these are a little bit smaller. So I trimmed up some branches on the pine trees. And then I realized that I wasn't watering them enough. So they are missing leaves, but they'll bounce back eventually. Then around the wagon, everything's doing good. Everything's kind of blooming out. Although I noticed that the salvia is still putting on some color. So that's exciting. So I'll just let all these things go to seed. Petunias are doing good up there. Um, there's a weed there. The hydrangea's doing good. And then the Russian sage kind of the same story here where like most of them are in sun for a little bit and then I forgot to water some. These petunias don't get as much sun as the other ones so as you can see there's a lot more green however they have been keeping up with blooming like the others so I don't really sense a problem where I need to rotate them or anything. This is a hydrangea that I forgot to water although there is some green in there still so there's hope. Um, the daisies are cut back. This garden just kind of, I don't know. I don't want to say I neglected it, but it got to a point where everything bloomed out and then I just kind of gave up on it, gave it minimal water, although I see color here. So, that's exciting. Actually, there's a whole bunch of color coming on these. Hmm. Well, there you go. When you think something's done, just let it go, let it do its thing, and it'll recuperate. The daisies back here, they need to establish themselves because I was watering them like four times a day and they just, I don't know, they were never happy. Then around here, the nine bark is doing good. This right here, this brown mess is some black eyed Susans that I transplanted. They'll come back. So that is this strip. Down. So around the tree, it's kind of the same story. Stuff is blooming out and we deal with deer in this area because they are loving the hostas. I've been spraying them, trying to get rid of the deer, but at this point in the season, it's kind of not really worth it. I did put in a different bench here. I'll show you guys. I'm under a pear tree, so the branches are flipping all over the place. So, there is a rotten pear here. So, I put this pineapple bench in to match the fountain, and I put another, and I put another hosta in there. So, I love this area around the windmill. I love the colors, the red with the yellow, and it's kind of nice because these bloom before these bloom, so I still have color. There is a clematis vine in here but I think it's currently getting overgrown by the black-eyed Susans, so that's something to think about. Okay, I also need to train it eventually. I guess I need to train it because it is falling. So we'll work on that. Then up by the tree, I just kind of planted random stuff. I did this ring, which it needs remulched. There's some more cone flowers. That's a version of a sunflower that's doing horrible. And then this is another bush clematis that has gotten eaten alive. Yeah, these sticks right here. That's what I'm talking about. 
I want to talk about this area for a moment. Do you see this mass of plant that is growing here? This is two plants. It is called Lime Time Coleus. And when I planted it, it was just a tiny, tiny little plant. So I planted some Happy Star Coneflowers behind it. Look at this plant. This has gotten huge. If you're in the market for a fast growing plant, this is the one you need to look for. And it's pretty. I like the color of it, although something's been eating on it. So let me zoom back out. So yeah, Lime Time Coleus. Another area that we can look at real quick is the Winslow Garden. Um, the lamb's ear is almost touching. Russian sage is doing good. The bees love it. They also love this sedum, which is just now changing colors. Um, the grass is getting its plumes on it. The sweet spire is changing to its fall color. So you can see the red in there. Can't wait for that. This is the Tough Stuff Hydrangea that's like, I don't know, it's dying. It's getting overtaken by a weed right now. And then just a little patch of Sombrero Red Coneflowers, which are still blooming. I love those. A mini Sea Holly, another version of Russian Sage, which will be moved next year because they like full sun. And as you can see, compared to these ones, it is not doing the best and the show off sugar baby for Scythia. Last area to update you on is the Crooked Shed. I have Russian Sage in each corner. It's a mini version, although <sighs> mini is a bit of an understatement with this plant because this one is massive. It's at least four by four right now. I mean, it's beautiful, I love it, but I'm not sure what the deal is with these other ones, I guess there is some good soil over there. So, it's doing beautiful. The limelight hydrangea tree is starting to change pink. So I guess I'm going to have to start planting pink in the garden. Black-eyed Susans are starting to fizzle out. Another Russian sage, which, this is weird. It's, like, tipped over. And then it's starting to grow. Like, see how it's tipped like that? starting to grow all these new branches which is kind of weird because we're getting really late into the season the hellebore is there the avens is done blooming more russian sage and more black-eyed susans so this is another area that i have planted up by our garage door Ugh, these petunias are going nuts i love them you have to like tiptoe through them because the walking space is not very wide but they are doing great then right in the corner of the house this is like a really hard place to plant because it used to be gravel and dirt so i have two more of the denim and lace russian sage and a miscanthus grass um i think it's here on sunrise then i have some wild black eyed susans that are just popping up under here so i haven't been weeding and more petunias which believe are fizzling out for the season. I don't know if I've ever showed you guys this area. This is a lamppost in the yard. Seahorse birdbath, wild berry hookera, and a, I think it's either a low and behold or an ice chip white blue butter, or white butterfly bush. It's doing wonderful. It smells so good, but the leaves on this are like a minty color. They're not your typical green. Oh, and then over here, some stuff that I didn't plant yet. This whole like back area needs some work, so ignore the mess. So I have a hydrangea that's actually coming out next year. I have a, I forget what this is called. This is a fluffy arborvita, and then this is another one of those program beauty berries. Then just walking around here, I have another coleus with some balloon flowers. It's mirrored on both sides. And that is pretty much the whole garden space. It's been a lot of fun planting stuff this year. It's been a learning experience. But I'm excited to see how things grow next year. And thank you guys so much for following along on this journey. 
I'm filming this video because I'm transforming the yard over to fall today, which is exciting and scary because it's 81 out right now. So wish me luck. I have lots of Pepsi and Gatorade out here. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.